Hello. 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 Oh, hi, Hartha. Good evening. Hello. Hello. Srinivas. Hello. 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 Yeah, I'm able to hear you. Yeah, I heard that. Good evening. Good evening. You can start the recording. Ah, okay, okay. One minute. Um. Started recording, right? No. Yeah, I just started. Able to see my screen? Yeah, I'm able to see. Okay. These are the topics which I discussed during the last class. So, do you have doubt on any of the topic? Uh, no, I'm clear. It... The most common entry question the between these two like and people used to confuse with these two and name because this is having some method and this has some method so we used to confuse most of the time that time we are mostly comfortable with it okay okay so both are used for similar purpose so we'll start with one comparable interface comparable interface is used to sort the objects of user different class Mm -hmm. This interface is found in a package called java.lang package. Okay. Mm. And it contains only one method that is compare to. Okay. Okay. This is this is an interface which is coming which is what which is coming from java.lang package and which has only one method compared to method. Okay? Mm. And it provides only single sorting sequence. That means you can sort the elements based on a single parameter like means so at the time of coding you have to take a decision that whether i need to sort on the name or mm, uh, any field like whatever the choice you need to select based on that field uh, it is going to perform sorting okay okay and that's where like we'll refer it as single sorting sequence mm. okay mm. so you need to implement this interface to your object like let's say if you want to sort your student object so you need to implement all your uh, that all your uh, student object with this interface, and then you need to overwrite this method to provide the logic like how you want the sorting it to be performed. Okay, basically compared to method, it has three kind of values: negative value, positive value, and zero value. Okay. Mm. And you are comparing internally, it returns these three values. When it's a negative value, so here compare to is going to compare two objects. One is the current object, the, and the other one is the object which it received. So it has to compare both, like what is the so which one is bigger, right? So okay. 
when the left side object is small, it's going to give us the left side's object is small with by compared to the right side object, then it's going to give us that negative value. When the left mm. side is object is bigger than the right one, that means it's a bigger value. So it gives the positive value. When both objects that you're comparing is equal, then it's going to give us a zero value. Okay. So okay. when it's positive here, positive and negative is just giving the uh, sign indication, but the value can be anything. So mostly we are not going to compare with the value. We are going to compare whether that value is greater than zero or less than zero or equal to zero. These are the three cases that we usually code when you're working with the programming. Okay. Got it? Mm. So first I'll show you without implementing any sorting function, how it looks like, then we'll apply sorting on top of it. Okay. First, uh, without using interface, we directly code. This is comparable. Did the data that we have stored yesterday, was the data sorted? No, right? Yesterday. Yesterday we have stored in array list, right? Yeah, the but data was not sorted. Not sorted, right? Very different. Yes. Mm. So first I'll show with the normal field. Mm. So let's I'm just doing with the integer. That was not sorted, right? See that collections dot sort is a utility method. Collections is a collections is a class which is having a method called sort method, which is going to take any object which is going to perform sorting on top of it. So right now we have passed it array list object that I would like to sort the data in and the array array list. So it has sorted, mm. right? Mm. So this is this work kind of works for the this directly straight away works for the regular kind of objects. Like this it is an object. If you place a string and whatever for general thing it works. But if you place a student object, then directly this will not work. Okay. Okay. If you place a student object inside this, if you directly say collection dot, it will not work until you do some groundwork for your student object. Okay. Right now, these are integer values directly, right? Oh, yes, these are integer values. And standard, these are just numeric sorting, it can sort. But if mm. it's a student object, how does it know that the student object that you have created is having a student num roll number field or a employee number field or integer field, or whatever? There should be something has to be informed that, right? Right? Mm. Mm. So, on what field it has to sort? Okay. Either it can be like student number or maybe student age or student name anything should be specified right so that has yeah to be if we give directly the object then it is difficult that it cannot even it. understand that uh, what to what to sort so let's okay. try with it let's mm. create a small small student object There's a student object class, right? So let's mm. we'll have some student classes. On the fly, I'm adding directly here. Your student mm. number hundred. 
So here, what happens? There is a new instead of saving in separate variable, I'm directly you're doing anonymous kind of instance. I'm doing right. Yeah, understood. Hmm. So like that, I'm, I because so once I add, I don't need that object at all. Hmm. That's where I'm adding directly into the. So we have a couple of student numbers, names, and ages, right? Mm. So we have added all the six to our list. So I'm directly trying to sort now. Mm. So what we have received, we have received another because it cannot understand that what the student object is, whether it is comparable or not. So Internally, so we talk, we are discussing about this one, right? Comparable. So when you try to sort, what happens internally? It tries to compare the data what you have saved in the array list with the comparable, whether that is sort of comparable or not. Not. But unfortunately, our class we haven't implemented a comparable interface, right? Mm. Hence, it is failing yet. See, it's clearly saying that your student object cannot be cached into comparable. If you implement that interface, then it can be castable. Okay. Okay. So what do I have to do? Implements comparable. Once implemented comparable, so what we need to do? We need to override that method. So compare to method. As I said, here we have three values we have to return, right? Either of these three. Compared to method is going to give us eighty value, positive value, zero value, right? Mm. Based on those conditions. So its return type is integer, and this is the object which we are getting, and this object has to be compared with the current object. So now see the logic here. So first we need to get the existing the object which is received. So some casting now. If so let's say I would like to sort on the roll number first. Okay, roll number equal to number here else roll number. You can return anything, any number it should be like positive. So for convenience, I'm just giving one. So your intention is either positive value or negative value has to return. Now I just implemented a comparable interface. I created a logic for it, and I run this. The stem has sorted the records, and it has displayed. So because these are objects. We are displaying directly in the object format. So what you have to do, we have to use our iterator logic to print the objects. Then only. Understood as of now? Okay, understood. So we are just displaying them. We just display start roll mm. number start mm -hmm. Mm 
So first I will comment this slide. That means I am not sorting at all. If I am not sorting, what happens? The water the way we inserted 20, 30, 23, 27, 32, right? Mm. Same way we are displaying. Now I'll just enable this line. What I am saying? Sort my arrow list. So when I say sort my arrow list, so what is the arrow list contains student object? It goes to student class. Was there any student logic logic implemented sorting logic? Yes. So this is the compare method which is having the logic. What exactly the logic? Rule number one. So here for the left side I have not used any object. The right side part I used as dot means what yes, is sir. this one? Student. So the current object and the object which I received I am comparing now. If both are equal or if, if anything is less than or greater than accordingly, I am writing zero positive value, negative value. Okay. Now if I run the same example. But data is sorted on the student number. Observe. Mm -mm. Yeah. Suppose you want to so as I said, this is a single sorting sequence. That means like you have to take a decision at the time of coding that on what field you would like to sort. Suppose in future you, are, you decided that I would like to sort on age. So what you have to do, you have to write modify the logic which is there inside this field. Okay. So um, instead of the roll number, I'm comparing modifying with age. That's all. And I run this. Data should be sorted in the age. Right? Oh yeah. So just a this logic, but whatever it is, it is like once you decided and you coded inside this method, and that is the logic which is going to be used for sorting whenever you ask for sorting. Okay. okay. You cannot do a multiple sorting at this moment. It has provision only to apply only one sorting technique that you have coded in the compare to method. Okay. Clear? Sure. Next one is called comparator interface. Comparable and comparator, the names are very close and the people used to confuse like what, in which method we have, in which interface we have compare method, in which interface we have compare to method. There will be most of the time used to confuse. Mm. This is like, right now you feel that there's no confusion, but over a period definitely it, it will. So comparator, is used for sorting the objects of user defined class and it is found in the package called java.util package and it contains two methods compare method and the equals method okay mm. i mean here we will be writing logic inside a compare method and mm -hmm. here in compare to method it takes only one parameter but whereas a compare method is going to take two parameters, that is two objects. Mm. And here, this interface is going to provide you multiple sorting sequence. That means you can sort the element based on any field at any time. One thing is that during the design time, you have to write the multiple logics and you can invoke any logic. But whereas in this one, you cannot, once you code it something, you have to use that sorting. If you want to change, you have to recode it. But here, you can write the multiple sort and sequence at the initial link and based on the user choice, you can apply whatever the choice you, you would request. Got it? Understood. Now we'll implement the similar kind of a structure to the comparable comparator. How to create a package right of create.
fields i'm talking the same thing one thing i'm just creating a the different name that right here you are not going to implement your interface for the student class okay mm. that's how i would like to write a sorting on the roll number field so what i will do for, for example as field so simply i'll say is comparator implements So now you can instead of typing you can even go for the generation. Here two objects you are getting, right? Press one two. So we'll compare them with I'll make two one. And equal to what is the student class is one logic is same so. logic is same only thing the difference is earlier age equal to s dot is where company means when i say age it refers to mm. the right current object this dot it is, is current object yes, yes uh. yeah. this even if you are not you are not using this it refers to current one mm. but here two objects you have passed right so what you have to do is s1 dot is equal to s2 dot is s1 S one dot is we are comparing with S two dot is that's all. Okay. Here there is no current object, right? Yes, yes. Because you are not on the current class, you are deal. You are comparing basically these two objects which you have received. S one dot is S two dot is so overall you are going to return zero plus one minus one, right? Mm. Now you go for the same object creation. I'll copy the objects in the same way. This is my new class, right? Suppose if you want to scroll number, so you can write one more call. Roll number comparator as well. So when I say roll number, I'll just use the roll number that's all. That's all. Um, that means now my program is ready with age and sorting, roll number sorting. Like that, I can have quite many number of sorting techniques. Before sorting, how it looks like. I'm just copying this. So, in comparator, we are comparing two objects, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. There are also two objects, but one is one object is current object. Yeah, in oh. student uh, class, it is it's current. comparable when you are coding for compare, but here, two objects that it is being passed to that logic before sorting. Mm -hmm. Somewhere I just copy wasted, right? Yeah. Before sorting, it was something like this, right? Whatever the order that you have entered, the same way. Okay. 
<coughs> now I can apply sorting. What you have, what you can do? Same way you can do. Yeah, what you had. This is the part I did. It. But there is a second parameter for it. So I'll say new. What is the class name? Roll number compared. Roll number compared. So when I say this, it's going to sort my records in the roll number comparator order. I'm going to ask for another sorting. Each compare. So I'm doing multiple sortings. If okay. you observe, right? This is two. So uh, just for heading. Before setting, uh, printing stop for it. <coughs> I'm just adding new line. So before starting like this, then. Okay, sorted roll number. Okay, after each it's not displaying. What's happened? Anything did I? Yeah, wrong condition. ITR one. ITR one is already completed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Roll number sorting. Eight sorting, right? Mm, yeah. So that means I can write like this multiple kind of a sorting logics. Here, what I did one after the other, I applied. But in reality, based on the program choice, suppose if your user is entering a sorting choice, and based on that choice, I can apply. If sorting choice is roll number, I'll call this method. Sorting choice is something else, age, I'll call this method, right? Okay. Sorting, sorting choice is something else, so I'll apply that method, right? Accordingly, I can apply. But whereas in the comparator, I do not have that options. Whatever is the developer code at the time of initial, the same thing I have to survive. But here, mm -hmm. I can write many sorting logics, and that logic can be in order to based on user choice. Mm. Clear the reference? If you are going looking for a default and natural sorting, you can go for this comparable. And if you are looking for any additional thing customized, and if you are looking for the multiple kind of a sorting, then you need to go for the comparator. It all depends on the requirement once again. Okay. So in comparable interface, so may, the main difference? One, you have coded in the current object. Yeah, in comparable. Comparable, you have coded in the current object. That means object. you are willing to code the, um, you are willing to sort the current object. Sort but here, current. you are willing to, you would like to provide a multiple sorting sequences. Here you can go for the different different kind of a comparators you can apply the multiple uh, logics at the center so let me cover the, all the points in this in detail with this point so, okay okay so we have a list of it right so, so comparable provides a single sorting sequence in other words we can sort the collection on the basis of single element that is either you have to say road number age or name whatever you have to talk only with respect to one one field Whereas a comparator provides multiple sequences, means you can sort on the basis of like multiple fields like an ID, name, price, etc., anything, right? Mm -hmm. So comparable affects the current class. Means comparable affects, the current, affects the current class because you implemented an interface on your student object. So it affects the current object. 
means mm. current object sorting is going to be performed whereas a comparator doesn't affects the sorting current class because we, there is no current class at all so there there is a kind of a class for which you are passing two objects you are sorting those two objects but nowhere you are focusing about the current class there right mm. and comparable provides compare to method whereas a comparator provides a compare method comparable is from the java.lang package and comparator is from the java.util package mm. so you can sort simply with the comparable as collection.sort it, it takes a list there is a comparator takes collection.sort list along with the comparator object as a second parameter which is sorting sequence like on what sorting basis you would like to sort the records mm -hmm. got it the differences okay Any confusion? Yeah. Any confusion? No, I I understood, but uh, still it's a little bit confusion. I don't know. Yes, tell me no yeah. problem. So I'll repeat it in case if you're not clear. No, uh, I know what exact. I mean, comparable and comparator means comparable means uh, it is comparing the current object and uh, current object and the object which is passed. Object which is passed. Yes. But in comparator. It is comparing both the objects which we are passing, right? Yes. When I say uh, which we, we are not going to pass. Everything happens by this one. When you okay. say collection dot sort, it internally performs a sorting. So it internally passes two objects. Oh, it's two objects. We are not passing it. We passed anywhere, no, right? We are calling okay. sorting logic. Sorting logic has a comp. Yeah. the sorting logic is required for sorting so that's why it starts comparing objects like age by that we understood understood clear yeah, better now this comparable interface uh, does all these come under collections yes okay i told you that collection is a big topic it has a lot of things yeah Have you ever heard the word for each loop? Yeah, uh, no. Yeah. Which loop? No. So for each loop is like one more like uh, it was introduced in the Java five version, which is uh, another set of for loop, which is mainly used for traversing an array or a collection. It is mainly used in array collection. So it is used for mainly traversing an array or a collection. Oh. Okay, traversing an array or array collection. Array. So the old one also you can use it, but that can be used for any purpose, right? But this is only for the arrays or the collections. Mm. The primary reason that is advantage of this for is that this for each loop is that it eliminates the possibility of the bugs and makes the code more readable. Mm. Mm? Means like in with the regular for loop, you need to do a lot. So if you make a mistake, it will be like problem but here there is no chance of making a mistake but both has advantages and disadvantages it's all depends on the need you can go for it but with this one you'll be reducing a code little and compared to the old for loop okay i'll show you what the difference is This is another, right? 
squared error, right? Do you remember the array? array yeah, squared. I do remember. <laughs> so, if in case if you wish to display the variance, how you should do? It to display the arrays. Uh, to display the elements from the array, how we used to do? Uh, we could write a small for loop, right? For loop, yeah. Not only for we can write with any, but mostly we, we have used a for. Yeah. In array list, you used while loop, right? We can use anything for anything. To display the elements in the list. Even you can go for file for loop also. So while is compared there. Okay, but mostly we used while only in the collections, right? I mean, for loop. for loop when you go for is when you have some initialization based on that there is a condition based on that increment. Then okay. it's that requirement. While loop, it has something already variable and only condition, right? Mm, yeah. So that's fairly. Like. Okay. But there also you can put for loop, but the while is preferred. Okay. This is the regular way, right? So what we are trying to do, we have declared a variable and we are checking a length and we are incrementing it, right? Means developer itself is declaring index value, is checking the length and is incrementing. Suppose mm -hmm. if you forgot to increment. There is a possibility developer might make a mistake. What happens here? So it won't increment, right? It won't increment. <coughs> it won't increment. It won't increment. That's what happens if it won't increment means? Mm, once it prints again, it goes and I think it gives us uh, same value. It uh, first it comes it into an infinite loop. It will never come to an end. Yeah, first it will print ten, and again, okay. Who is going to stop? Is nobody going to stop? It's infinite. Ten only. Okay. 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 The developer made a small mistake, and which is not aware at the time of coding. At runtime, uh -huh. it realized it. So it was developer can make a mistake, right? Mm, yeah. But so if you do the same thing with the advanced for loop I'm commenting regular regular one I'm commenting hmm. for each loop is called, just called as for the variable name column it can take either array name or the collection name hmm. that's a syntax that's all we have done. Oh, int j. Int some variable name. When I say int, it's just a data type of the variable. So if you have a data type and variable name, mm -hmm. column, array name or a collection name. In this case, a is array name, right? Yes, yes. So just printing a j, that's all. So do you think here there is a possibility of incrementing and decrementing? No, right? No. If there is no need of incrementing or decrementing, then there is no chance of making a mistake by developer. Oh yeah, yeah. Right? Mm. Here, if you forget to check the length properly, there will be a problem. If you forget to increment, problem. If you forget to initialize with zero, there will be a problem with the wrong values, right? Mm. Code, there will be a problem. Here, just declare variable and point that variable to your array name or collection. That's all you are done with that. No. Right? Okay. Yeah. If the things is not in con your control, there are certain cases that it will be like better, right? Mm. Possibility like developer can make mistake at any point of time. This is how the developer like the advanced for list is going to work. The same thing if you try with the array list. This is the regular variable, right? So now we'll show no. the array list.
So till now we have seen that using iterator you can display the values from the array list, right? Mm. <coughs> Can't we display with the array, uh, for loop? Have you ever thought? Uh, just now you said that we can do with for also, right? Any loop we can do. Because this is a get method, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing, I'm declaring i and as many number of elements, I'm having a size method and incrementing i. Incrementing. So mm -hmm. keep on asking getting the element, right? Get of mm -hmm. i. This is the regular flow. Mm -hmm. Using the regular for loop, I can do. So here also, if I make a mistake here, what's happened? Same oh, kind of under confinement loop, I to, right? To avoid this, what you have to do in the same way, you have to code for what? And change any variable name. Okay. What is your collection name? Yeah. DJ K of air. Okay. Okay. Sorry. This is object right, so we need to say that. Okay. Right, hundred to hundred. The coding is very simple, right? The variable. So, but for the, arrays, what we declared? Just we declared int, right? In arrays. That is primitive data type, but these are primitive data types, right? Int. When yeah, these are primitive data types. It is like it is like the object, right? If you look for array method, l dot add. What is the signature? Object. Right? Oh, object. Yes. Yes. So object. That's where like it is asking me to convert it. So uh, just now you mouse over there. Mouse just mouse over on yes. add. Add method. Okay. Mouse over. Then oh, no, just now I it's saw the top. Method. Okay. Yes. Oh yeah. Add of object T means these five hundred, four hundred. All these are objects. Yes. Okay, so okay, e. So all these are integer objects. Integer objects. So okay, so you declared it as object of k. Yes. Right. Understood. And if see the code, same coding we followed for both. Here, if you are doing either this approach or if you do the iterator. Developer can make a mistake if they are not doing properly, right? But in this case, there is no chance of making a mistake directly. You point your variable name to the collection or the array name, it starts printing all the values without having any impact. Mm. Clear? Okay. Uh, okay. Still, I have doubt about that object. Yes, just tell me. Here? <laughs> the declaration. So, Generally, left side part is declaration, right? Yeah. Each and every time it gets the value from here. Mm, yes. Right? Yes. Okay. First, before going to that, like, you have a confusion here, right? Mm -mm. What I'm directly printing here, right? That's where, like, you're not able to find it what exactly it is. Let me take into a variable. Same thing we are doing oh. there. Suppose if you are not doing object, suppose if you, uh, suppose if you type for int, minute. Oh, and the k variable is of type object. Yes, exactly. Okay. So suppose if you try for, you see, cannot convert from object to int. What so it is? I'm in a giving you an object. But you are trying to convert into int, which is not possible, right? That's why it is giving error. I mean, in error list, the return type is object. The variable return type is. Yeah, from when you call a get method, it gives you object. Object of. Understood. Now I got understood. What it? 
Mm. So when I try to just show you the issue, like integer, I'm still converting into object into a small int. It's mm. giving an issue, right? Cannot convert mm. object int. How to resolve this? Just make it as an object. Okay. Then it's fun. That's what we are printing it. So when you are directly printing everything like like this, it takes care of doing all those things on the line. Mm. Clear? Yeah, clear. Any doubts in these topics, like whatever we discussed today? No. Where will comparator and the for each loop? Yeah, I know. Clear it. Yeah. Yeah, that's all. Thank you for today. Mm -hmm. And we'll continue with the remaining topics on Monday. Yeah. So happy weekend. Okay. Thank okay. you. Practicing, and if you have any further doubts, we can discuss on Monday. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. So do not get confused with these two. Once you practice with one or two examples, then you should be good with these two. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. I think I need to practice. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't see anything else. Any more doubts for today? I don't know. Today is okay. I'm clear. Okay, okay. Thank but you. But when I start practicing only, I do get no need doubts. So that's that's the thing. Even like if you practice, if you start practicing in the previous Sunday issues, we immediately will discuss on the subsequent class. First, we'll focus uh, on that. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, mm. Those things will be cleared for you. Mm. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you, Harita, and good yeah. night and happy weekend. Yeah, bye. Good night.